Welcome to Chandwell. My name's Michael and I'm building the back of a commercial street to run behind my station. I've started the second building in the street. In this video, I'll explain why its serial packet mock-up was about a third too large and how I approach starting a frontage like this. This building is based on the back of 22-24 North Parade in Bradford. My original mock-up had it standing much higher than Warner's next door. It took me a while to notice that this first floor fire escape door is almost 3 metres tall, which doesn't seem very likely. What happened? Whenever I start a building like this, I try to find an architect's elevation and then scale it based on the height of the doorways compared to a scale scene's N-gauge door. This has always worked in the past, but it went a bit awry on this one. I went back to Inkscape to see what I had done, and it was quickly very obvious. I used this basement door as the scale, and sure enough, this door is the right height compared to the scale scene's door. I'd just assumed it was a pair of double doors. But this door is to the building's cellar. It's partially below ground level, and the elevation drawing does not show the underground part. Oops. It was therefore an easy job to scale the building based on the first floor fire escape door instead. Once scaled like this, by pure coincidence, the building's roof will be at exactly the same position as the building next door. This gives me confidence that it is now much closer to the size that it should be, and I won't have a giant building sticking out of Market Street. I like my buildings to be as solid as possible. I print the designs onto A4 sticky labels. I'm going to use two layers of half millimeter card for the outer layer and one layer of one millimeter card for the inner. I stick the front two layers to half millimeter card. The beauty of the sticky label is that it sticks immediately and can be cut without waiting for any glue to dry. I printed two small bits of red brick texture and cut these out. Once stuck onto the back layer, in place of where a couple of windows will have been, they give a convincing bricked up window effect, whilst not being the full depth of the other windows. This should give a nice impression that the bricks were added into the window aperture, rather than behind it. I sometimes print bricked up windows directly into the overall building texture, but I do like the slightly recessed look here. Before I glue the outer layer to the inner, I add the building's main texture. This is printed to photo paper and cut out. I'm going to try to avoid any visible edges by wrapping the three sides of the building with one piece of folded texture. I score fold marks where the edge of the building will be, and then stick the outer layer of half mil card into place with PVA. I've noted the three windows which will be bricked up. I cut diagonal slits across the window apertures. The four resulting triangles can then be tightly wrapped and glued around the card. This gives a stone texture on all four exposed card edges and takes away any hint of the card shining through. When placed on top of the next layer of card, the effect I was after becomes apparent. I print stone effect parts for the sills and lintels. With 26 openings, that's a lot of bits of stone. These parts are tiny. The smallest is only a millimetre deep. Each one is a different size or shape, so I print them in the right position to be matched to the face of the building. At these tiny sizes, I always end up tearing one or two, so I print two copies side by side. These are the ones I need first. I've used a marker pen here to take the white edge off the paper. I use PVA to glue the lintels and sills into place. You can see that the sill has a large overlap, and the lintel has the tiniest of overlaps, just a fraction of a millimetre. When these are folded and glued, you can see that they take the shape of carved stone. This is very subtle when you realise that this lintel is only 2mm tall. I cover the back of the outer layer with PVA glue, and then mount the next layer onto it. I now have a 1mm thick wall. I can now make the rest of the window apertures in the same way as the first set. I start with this one, because the lintel and sill that I just added continue onto the non-bricked up part and I didn't want to risk damaging these parts by leaving them flapping around. I've slightly torn the paper when wrapping it around this tiny upright part of stonework. This is easy to disguise by dabbing it with a grey marker. Grey can be used to disguise tears on almost any surface. It's very time consuming to wrap and dress this many windows, but it is procedural and strangely relaxing. Some parts are incredibly small and using tweezers is a must. I use a ruler to try and keep them straight. You get a few seconds of wiggle time 
by using PVA glue, but you really do need to take care. Some of these parts are absolutely tiny. I now have a building face ready for its window glazing and ready for the sides to be attached. I had hoped to get all of these windows done this week, but all of my weekend spare time was spent on a different task. I designed a new channel logo for Chandwell to replace the Class 47 logo I've been using for the last 18 months. I spend much more time showing how the urban landscape is constructed and sharing the fictional history of the town than I do running trains. So I thought that the logo should represent and respect that. It was designed in Inkscape, of course. I started with this, which included my favourite bridge and the weir, but it didn't scale very well. Using the actual designs of the station building and the Royal Scott Hotel, I then went through 12 more revisions. Each one got simpler, better proportioned and better aligned. I've ended up with this, which I really like. I hope you like the logo. It took something like 10 hours to develop. Here's a look at how I arranged it in Inkscape. I shared the development of my new logo with my channel members over the weekend. If you also would like to see behind the scenes photos and videos, whilst also supporting the development of Chandwell, please use the join button under the video for more details. Next week, I will show the glazing of this building and I will make a start on its finer detail like air conditioning units, air ducts and downspouts. There is also the little challenge of scratch building an end scale fire escape for the upstairs door. Here's a look at the first building I scratch built for Chandwell, Iron Bridge Works. Watch out for the next video in about a week. Until then, thank you for watching, stay safe and I'll see you then. Thank you.